What's going on guys, it's Hank from Sprues and Brews, and today we're going to be doing a little figure painting, specifically focused on honing our skills painting black and brown skin tones. In honor of Black History Month this month, at a time of recording, I'm doing a little project on the 761st Tank Battalion. For those of you that might not know, the 761st, known as the Black Panthers, were a segregated tank unit that fought alongside Patton's 3rd Army from fall of 1944 through to the end of the war in Germany. By war's end, they were a highly decorated unit with a Medal of Honor and several Silver Stars, among other citations. And I figured this would be a really good project to honor these brave men who fought for liberty and freedom abroad, even though they didn't experience those same freedoms at home. So if that sounds like a good project to you, grab yourself a beverage, get cozy, and let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so for practice here, I painted up the driver and bow gunner that I'm gonna use for this project. I was really happy with how they came out, so I'm gonna use some of those same techniques for a couple of Alpine figures for the commander and loader. Our first step, as usual, is to prime the figures and heads with some acrylic primer. If you've seen any of my other figure painting videos, you'll recognize these little DIY painting jigs that I use. They're just blocks of scrap wood and drywall screws. You can super glue the figures right on there and they easily snap off when the process is complete. We'll start out with the heads here. I painted a base coat on both with Vallejo Dark Rust to give us a nice rich shadow tone to work up from. Also important to note, I'll be jumping back and forth between both of our guys here. So some techniques will be demonstrated on our tank commander and others will be demonstrated on the loader. Next, we'll grab some Vallejo Light Flesh to fill in our eye sockets. It's okay to be a little messy here because we're gonna go back and refine the eye shape afterwards. For the eye color, you can really use any tone that you like. I grabbed some Vallejo Green Gray here because it's nice and subtle and we don't want our eyes to look too buggy. With the whites painted in, we'll go back to our base color of Dark Rust and clean up the eye a little bit. We're going for a small almond shape and we're going to follow the sculpt of the figure. After that, we'll grab some flat black and pencil in some eyebrows to help add some contrast above the whites of the eyes. I also gave our loader a mustache because why not? After that basic paint job is complete, we'll do some simple glazes to help give the skin a bit of depth and color. Our loader is gonna have a slightly darker skin tone, so here I mixed a bit of our base dark rust with some Vallejo red leather. That gives us a nice ruddy brown tone and helps liven up the flesh around his cheeks, neck, and nose. Our tank commander will have a lighter complexion, so for him I mixed some Vallejo chocolate brown with a bit of that same red leather. A similar concept here, but there's so much variation in black and brown skin tones, and now our two guys are going to have some individuality sitting up there in the turret together. You can also clean up and adjust the brow line here a bit if necessary. At this point, I went back and made a slightly lighter second glaze of red leather and dark rust for our loader. He was still looking a bit flat at this point, and that second glaze made a big difference. And here our guys are looking pretty good. To finish up the heads, we just need to paint up their steel pot helmets. We'll do this with some trusty US olive drab, and we'll add in some detail with the straps using a little bit of red leather. A few very careful dots of white aluminum will really help pop the details on all of our clasps and buckles. Alright, and there are our painted heads. We'll set those aside for now and finish them up in the weathering process in just a bit. Turning our attention to the bodies of our crewmen. We'll paint up our loader's HBT coveralls in some green gray. And our tank commander will have some brown pants. We'll paint those up using some Vallejo beige brown. Our loader looks like he's wearing an HBT jacket and our tank commander appears to have an M1941 field jacket. Both of those we'll paint in with some khaki. And we'll also be sure to paint the undershirt using a little beige brown for a nice contrast there. 
Our tank commander figure is a little more complex, so we'll be sure to paint his pistol belt with some German camo beige so that it stands out from the regular beige color of his jacket. We'll also paint in his 45 holster with some red leather. The ammo pouches can be painted in with a bit of tan earth, but I didn't show that on camera here. Next, we can't forget to carefully paint up the grip of his 45 and his binoculars with a little bit of flat black. The straps for his binoculars also look nice in some red leather. At this stage, we'll return to the hands and be sure to paint those up using the same colors and techniques we used for his head to make sure that the skin tones match nicely. Our TC is wearing some M1938 boot wraps, so we'll be sure to hit those with some khaki as well. And then we'll paint in our boots with some red leather. These Alpine figures have some beautifully sculpted patches on the arms of the jackets, so we'll cover those next. I like to start by laying down a base coat of flat black on all of the sculpts. For our armor division patch, we'll carefully block in the three triangles using flat yellow, blue, and red. And for our rank chevrons, we can use that same yellow that we used on the armor division patch. I absolutely love this addition from Alpine. It makes such a difference with the finished product and it just looks so good. Now we're gonna pop the button details with just a very light touch of white aluminum. I know this is technically not accurate, but at this scale, it really helps catch the eye at a distance, so I like to do it. To wrap up the painting process, we'll do a very simple bit of highlighting on our main clothing colors. To do this, I mix in a bit of light flesh to each of those clothing colors to help pull out the highest folds in our clothing. It's a super basic technique, but it makes a big difference. I have a full video tutorial on the process that you can check out here. With painting complete, we can hit all of our work with a gloss coat to protect the paint job. I like to treat my figures with a pretty bold dark wash to help accentuate all the details and shadows. I know it looks pretty aggressive now, but don't worry. In just a minute, we'll pull almost all of this off using a little bit of enamel thinner. For our heads, I found that using ammo streaking grime adds a really nice subtle shadow effect to the details of these sculpts, and it works super well for these darker skin tones. Once any excess wash has been removed and the figures have dried completely, it's time to spray everything with a coat of ammo matte lucky varnish to seal up all of our work. With that complete, we can carefully remove our heads from the mounting bases, clean up the necklines a little bit, and super glue them into place. After a quick trim of the boot mounting points, our figures are complete. And here are our finished 761st Tank Battalion crewmen. This was a really fun challenge for me, learning how to paint black and brown skin tones over the course of these four figures. It's a skill that I still have a lot of room to further develop, but it's a really important one to have in anybody's scale modeling arsenal. If you'd like a more in-depth look at painting US Army uniforms, I've got a full video on that that I'll link here in just a second. I've also got some tutorials on German infantry and even some 148 scale pilots that you can check out if you'd like to as well. And that's going to be it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome scale modeling content. And until next time, be well, happy building, cheers.